Well, I believe that the question is whether these two models of agriculture can coexist because they both have different merits, often produce very different products, and if they are in direct competition with one another, will lead to the disappearance of small family agriculture. Even though small farms contribute most to reducing poverty in rural areas, small agriculture can also benefit rural development, meaning that it helps establish different services, schools and jobs besides farming, which can develop rural areas and slow down migration into the cities. So we should not put these two types of production directly into competition, because big farms, large-scale plants, are more competitive and that's partially because they don't integrate the negative externalities that they produce, both for society and for the environment. So how can we guarantee the coexistence of these two models? I think that a policy directed at small family farming, which for example gives loans to farmers below the interest level of the market, a policy that aims at strengthening unity between farmers so that they can keep a greater share of what they produce and that also helps them to reach a higher added value by transforming their harvest and by distributing it themselves. All this can help small farming farming. But to achieve it, we need a kind of affirmative action and we need a policy that concentrates on this kind of agriculture. Some countries already do this. I'm thinking, for example, about Brazil, which has managed to foster coexistence between these two types of agriculture and which has basically understood that we cannot leave it to the markets to regulate the competition between them. Doing that, that would be extremely dangerous and it would worsen the situation that we have today where small farming is not competitive enough. Today it leads to massive migration into the cities where migrants form an urban underproletariat which is very difficult to, to nourish. Well, I believe that in the last 25 years we have seen the development of globalized food chains and the development of global markets. Meanwhile, we have an agriculture that remains confined to a small local setting, often with the goal of feeding oneself. What we have not seen is the development of local and regional markets. And it's striking to see that a lot of investments have been made in the infrastructures of exporting economies in order to connect them to the global markets. Very little infrastructure has been built to connect regions among each other different cities within countries or different countries within a region. So I believe that we have to stress the development of regional markets. It's more logical and coherent to have Mali trading with Burkina Faso or with Benin than to promote cotton production in these countries, which can later be exported to the international markets.